Hello students, welcome back to the biology class. So in the last class, we continued the chapter number 10, 11, that is the biotechnology principles and processes. And we discussed about the properties of a cloning vector. We learned in the last class that uh, after, electro, uh, after gel electrophoresis, the next step is to, once the gene of interest carrying DNA fragment we have obtained, we need to make multiple copies of it. Now why copy making is important? Because it is something like when we have found a main uh, DNA fragment with us, we don't want to lose it by performing an experiment straight away on it. So what the researchers try to do is they try to make multiple copies of this so that it, you, otherwise we'd, we have to start the experiment again from the beginning. So that's why making copies in, is important. And making copies in the concept of biotechnology is called as cloning. And a vector, there are vectors which are able to carry this gene of interest or the gene of interest carrying fragment or piece of DNA into the host organism. So that's why uh, for a long time plasmids and bacteriophages they remained as first of all plasmids and nowadays even bacteriophages and now even more type of cloning vectors have come into existence because the technology of biotechnology is becoming more and more advanced. So a uh, cloning vector can be, uh, we learned in the last class that cloning vector can be defined as a fragment of DNA uh, or, a, or a segment of DNA which is able to carry the gene of interest in it and it also carries the origin of replication so that it can cause copy making followed by this piece of DNA which is also called as rDNA because we have modified it has to be shifted into the host organism so this shift is also possible with the help of it that's why it is called as a cloning vector so we learned in the last class that cloning vectors are also called as the vehicle dna also called as the carrier dna and they are the molecules of dna which are able to carry a foreign dna segment with them and introduce inside the host that's why they are vector and not just introduce but also make copies of it so it is called as the cloning vector. Now we learned that there are plasmids, there are viruses, uh, even plant viruses, uh, plant attacking viruses uh, that is called as the phytoviruses or phyt phytophages. We even have zoophages and even bacteriophages which are able to provide us a good uh, cloning vector. Along with that we learned that even YAC, BAC that means yeast artificial chromosome, bacterial artificial chromosomes are also important cloning vectors. And we learned in the last class that uh, bacteriophages are much better than the plasmid because they give a very high copy number compared to the plasmids. And then we started the concept of modification that how today vectors which are used are engineered in such a way that they help in link easy linking of the foreign DNA and then selection of recombinants from the non recombinants. So we discussed about the properties of the cloning vector in the last class in detail. We understood about the figure 11.4 which talks about plasmid of E. coli which was successfully modified which was successfully modified by two, two scientists, Bolivar and Rodriguez in 1977. And they successfully attached two selectable marker genes into it, which are shown in this figure in the pink color. So those two selectable markers are, help, are something which help us to understand whether transformation has taken place or not. Uh, we learned in the last class that the origin of replication is one of the most important feature of the cloning vector and it should have a very small size also because small size that means less than 10 kilo bases will help uh, in better performing of experiment because the purification of DNA becomes tough uh, if the size of the vector is bigger than this. So small the size of the cloning vector better it would be as a candidate for cloning vector. And we learned in the last class that origin of replication <coughs> is the place where replication starts and it is the uh, it is the segment of DNA of the plasmid which even controls the copy number. So if we want more copies of a 
foreign DNA or gene of interest, then we should select or choose a plasmid which uh, gives a higher copy number. Some of the plasmids may give 10 copy number, some may give 50, some may even give hundreds also. So uh, whenever we want to go for a plasmid, we should choose a plasmid which gives the higher uh, copy number. And then selectable marker is the gene which is inserted. So uh, the diagram which I explained in the last class, we understood from there that uh, e. coli does not carry any antibiotic resistance gene. It is mentioned in the NCRT also. And uh, these two scientists, Bolivar and Rodriguez, they successfully attached two genes uh, which are also called as selectable marker genes. And if this gene is successfully inserted in a plasmid, then the plasmid can be called as trans transformant. If they fail to attach, then it is called as the non transformant. So we learned in the last class that generally the gene coding for resistance against antibiotics, amplicin, chloramphenicol, tetracycline, kenamycin, they are considered as useful selectable marker. And then we started the topic of cloning sites also. Uh, we only this, did this much that there should be preferably uh, minimum and it is always good to have single recognition site for the commonly used restriction enzymes and uh, from the notes I told you that it is always better to have it is always better to have the uh, cloning sites in the selectable marker itself so it is the best scenario the best scenario is that the uh, the recognition site should be inside the selectable marker so today you are going to understand this concept that why should we have the cloning sites or the recognition sites of the, of the enzymes inside the selectable marker gene. So this much we covered in the last class. Let's continue from here. Uh, remember that NCRT is the base for biotech topics because in, in your maximum help books also similar language has been picked up copy pasted. So please refer NCRT side by side. We learned one more thing in the last class that there is a segment in the plasmid which is ROP which stands for which, which codes for proteins required for replication of plasmid.